Hey, this is Sean with Spot On Grooming. Today we're going to demystify the process of tuning shears for you. We've got a good selection to look at, so stay tuned. First, we want to talk about diagnosing how your shears are operating, if they're too loose, if they're too tight, or just right. So I want to show you this because it's really not that complicated. This is a shear that I deliberately tune that's too loose. Now, this is what it's going to look like. What you want to do is hold your shear up and if it's a, a chunker or a thinner and it's got a thicker blade on, on one side, you want that to be the side that's, that's running horizontal instead of vertical. And what you want to do is just let go of it. If it flops like that all the way closed, you have got a shear that's way too loose. And what's going to happen with a blade that's too loose is, and with a convex blade like this especially, the blades are going to wobble and cross, and it's going to reduce the edge quickly. You're going to have to sharpen it more, and eventually it's just going to ruin the shear. So this is not something that you want to do. You'll notice that you're going to be folding the fur more instead of it cutting. Uh, even though it's easy on your hands when it's loose, this is not what you want. The next shear that I have that's an example is too tight. Using the same technique, I'm going to hold this up, and I'm going to let go. Look how open that is. That's not what you want. Sometimes if it stops there, uh, this isn't as bad as when it's too loose on the blade, but it's still not good for cutting. You'll notice a terrible performance, and it's hard on your hands, so you're going to burn your hands out. Too tight, it's just this giant wedge. Now I want to show you just right. This is a chunker. What I'm going to do is take the thicker side, because the thin side is hard to do this test with, so I'm going to have the thin side pointed straight up. When I pull this down and let it free fall, you're getting about yay much on there. Not quite half, but kind of in between. And with thinning shears, sometimes if I was to uh, make it too tight, I would think that airing on too tight is better uh, than too loose. Because they're hard to tell sometimes with these. So my personal preference is to go just a little too tight if you're not sure, if it's kind of in between. But that's a basic diagnosis of too loose too tight, and just right. So what we're going to talk about next is the different kinds of tightening components on the shears. We have a selection of them here that uh, will help you to kind of identify what you need. First off, we have two samples of shears that have just your typical ball bearing thumb screw. These are the easiest. When you're twisting them, you can hear a distinct click. It's very clear. One click tells you there has been a change made. These guys are very common too. I don't know the official name of them, but you're going to need to have a particular key in order to use them. Some people call these UFO keys because they look like a UFO key. They kind of look like a spark plug gapper to me. Um, but they will allow you to do a universal uh, adjustment on very many different types of screws like this. But you can see clearly this is not a flathead screwdriver. It's not a Phillips head. It's unique and you will need a special tool like this. They're about a dollar to two dollars a piece. Then lastly we have what appears to be a flathead screwdriver on both sides. One larger and one smaller. These are what you typically find on um, middle level shears. Usually the nicer ones have ball bearings or the pancakes. There's nothing wrong with it. They're just a little difficult to tune if you don't have a special tool. But i got a great trick for you. All right, let's get the show on the road and actually tune some shears here. We're going to start off with the ball bearing thumb tension screw. Uh, what you're going to do for this, if you remember this one, was too loose. We held up the test and it's sloppy. So, just like with most screws, righties, tighties, lefties, loosey. We're going to turn this a couple of times until we get what we want. See how it's stopping about right here? This is about right for me. I think that this is a good tightness. It's not too loose. It's not too tight. It's consistently stopping about that much. You don't ever want it to stop any more than that. If it's like this or anything else, it's too tight. So this is just right. See how easy that was with your fingers? No problem. These are definitely the easiest to tune. So this is the same mechanism, the thumb screw as uh, the straight that I had, but I wanted to show this to you because it's a curve. Curves can be a little tricky sometimes, especially shorter curves, because of, well, the curve. So what we want to talk about, if you remember, this one was too tight. See how wide it is 
from that free fall that we set it into. What we're going to do is the same thing, but I'm going to turn it to the left to loosen it a few clicks. The thing that's tricky about curves is right around where they bend, sometimes they can get hooked up. And they're just a little bit harder to get a reading. That's still far too tight. Don't know if you heard that click. I sure did. That is getting just about right. I think it's still just one click away. That's where I like it, right about there. Sometimes brand new curve shears when you're trying to tune them just seem to have like this sticking point here. And it's because of the curve. So uh, take that in mind when you're tuning curve shears. It's important, especially shorter ones. Here with this shear, we have a key adjustable tuning screw. In order to do this, you're gonna to need to have one of these tuners. As you can see on this tuner, it has many different teeth for many different particular types. I know this shear very well, and it uses like these little kind of horn prongs on this. In order to tune this thing, just like with the ball bearings, you'll hear a distinct click. And what you need to do is insert those horns right into there, and then you just turn it. And it's almost too easy. You, you don't feel like you're really turning it, except that you'll hear that click. There we go. Just like that. That's pretty simple. You just need a special tool for it. No screwdriver is going to do the job. So for tuning this kind of shear, you see that we've got a flat head that's kind of peculiar looking on one side and then we have a very small flat head on the other. There is a special tool design that costs 60 to $80 to use this. You might have seen them in grooming magazines. It's this thing that locks on both sides and it allows you to turn the shear in order to tighten it. I don't buy those, I don't use them, I know how to get around this. You can do this with another person or if you have some sort of a vice, I've created this really basic contraption where I've stuck a very fine, small flathead screwdriver in here and then I have another one for the bigger side. So the way that you're going to want to do this is you're going to want to insert the small flathead onto the mobile screwdriver. There we go, secured. Then you're going to take your other flathead and you're going to put it on the top. Now here's where lefty loosey righty tighty doesn't apply if you're doing it this way at least. And you'll have to play around with it to, to figure out which side your, your shear is tightening or loosening with. For this particular shear, if I want to tighten it, I'm actually going to take the shear and turn it to the right. And then I take it off, and of course it's too tight because I just tightened this thing where it was perfect. So if I want to loosen it, what I'm going to do is set it on there, and I'm going to turn it the other way. I'm going to turn it clockwise, at least for this shear. And these are very sensitive. I've noticed that uh, a little bit will go a long way. That is just about right. Look at that. Okay, just some real basic questions and answers about when and how you should tune your shears. We've actually already covered how, but when? When should you tune your shears? How do you know it's time? Is it something that is on a schedule? Eh, the answer is really no. It depends on how it's performing. Generally, when you buy a brand new shear, and especially found this with texturing shears over the years, you'll use them for about two weeks after you tune it perfect, and then you'll have to retune it again, and it'll typically hold the right uh, tension for quite a while. Um, sometimes, um, older shears, you know, they, I, I just test them weekly, and sometimes if it feels bad while I'm using it during a groom, I'll just tune it right there, I'll do the test. Um, you should always put a little bit of oil on, I think, just to tune it, unless you can see it's just as greasy as Kentucky Fried Chicken. And you would just take your little oil needle and you put a little dab here. It doesn't take much, and a little dab there. And then you just open and close your shears and make sure that it's lubricated within that area of the, the tension screw. Uh, it's good to do that for just basic maintenance. You don't want so much oil though because you can get dog hair all over it, it's gonna get nasty. Um, another question is, are there certain things that can cause your shear to be uh, untuned? Besides just usage, yes. Uh, dropping them will definitely untune them. 
It'll make them too light, usually too loose, but they can make them too tight. It just depends. So if you ever drop a shear and you pick it up and the performance is terrible, I would encourage you to try and tune it first before calling a sharpener and saying, ah, my blade's total, can you come sharpen this thing? Because it might not require it. And you'll just kind of be wasting their time to come out or ship, it, ship off to. They're definitely going to charge you for it. So it's empowering to know how to tune your shears. It's empowering to know how to, uh, you know, control that so that you aren't at the mercy of experts all the time who charge money. That is our training on how to tune your shears. I hope you found this useful and we'll catch you later.